If you're installing network cabling, wouldn't you want to do it right the first time? Hi, my name is Jeremy Chara. I'm the founder and CEO of VIA. We're a managed service provider that does network cabling as a service, along with a whole bunch of other technology services. And when we first built our cabling service 10 years ago, we pretty much just followed people around and took orders. <laughs> which means we saw a lot of weird stuff. We followed customers around that were kind of like, it's almost like painting. Like, uh, I think I want, I think I want a jack there, uh, there. You know, it, 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 in the end, it, we had to completely move things around, right? I've been in uh, installations where the building was completely wired with Cat6 cable. And someone said, ah, just rip it all out. Let's go with the latest standard, Cat6A at the time. And so it was a, a six-figure cabling project to literally rip out an entire Cat6 infrastructure and replace it with Cat6A. Is that the best use of funds? And that's the thing. I, I, get, here's the reason we wanted to create these videos. We wanted to, to have a win-win to where, where customers are feeling like, wow, I really understand how network cabling should be. And in the end, we're doing a service of providing a lot of the, the key information to make sure it's done right the first time and save everybody a whole bunch of headaches, right? So this first video is going to be focused around the three different types of ethernet cabling that you'll run into in the modern world with my little scratch pad here. Uh, category 5E, CAT6, and CAT6A, which is how most people say it, just, just CAT. So, so category 5E has been around for eons, right? It will transmit at 1000 megabits per second, which is more commonly called one gigabit per second, for 328 feet or 100 meters if you're an international standard kind of person, right? And this has been the de facto standard for years and years and years that most people have gone with and will work for most things, I would say almost all things nowadays. So first off, I want you to get in your mind that Category 5E is not necessarily bad. So let me, let me make sure you get this key fact. If you were to look at the average user, the average employee, team member, they use between one and five megabits per second for their daily work. That's checking email, surfing the web, doing a video call, voice over IP. All of that fits in one to five megabits per second. So if you're seeing a thousand megabits per second, you might be like, yeah, that's awesome. And most of the time it is. Category six came along and increased that up to, let me grab my blue pen, up to 10,000 megabits per second, AKA 10 gigabits per second for up to 165 feet, right? Now this, this could still transmit a thousand megs for 328. They just said, hey, we're, we're gonna multiply that by 10 for, for the, the shorter cable runs. Now, does that, does that mean you should see that and be like, oh man, let's rip out the whole Cat 5e and, and start with Cat 6? Maybe, maybe not. I, I, would, I would probably say if you already have Cat 5e, for most users, again, it's gonna work. But in new construction, in new builds, most of the time you're gonna wanna start with this. And that's because there's another key fact I'll give you. The average cabling installation should last 15 to 20 years. And 15 to 20 years from now, you may see, you know, a lot more 10 gigabit per second connections. Although, and let me make sure I emphasize, to probably key devices. I still can't see two decades from now. I can't see any application that would use 10 gigabits per second for the average user. These kind of runs are usually for the high capacity devices. For instance, the wireless access points that are being run in the ceilings. You might do this for individual servers, right? That, uh, that are supporting a whole bunch of users or a video or a security system that has just a, a ton of inputs coming into it. That's where you may need some of that high capacity. And you may choose to wire the entire building with category six and maybe, maybe just specific runs with category six A which I know some of you are thinking I'm going to go to 100,000. Oh, no, it's this is same thing, 10 gigabit, gigabit, gigabits per second, easy for me to say, for 328 feet. That's, that's the big difference. Now, as you're going between these guys, I want you to be thinking that in terms of cabling cost and I would say some pain, you're looking at about a 30% price increase, both on materials and labor, because as you go, the cabling gets thicker, harder to work with, harder to bend, you know, th those kind of things, harder to crimp the, the ends on and things like that. So it just takes more time, the, the more cable you use. So let me get back to the scenario I painted at the beginning of this video, and then we'll wrap up. I said, we had a customer replace the entire category six cabling infrastructure with category six A. 
Was that a good idea? Maybe. Maybe if they needed 10 gigabits per second to every desktop. However, I know this customer and they didn't. It was, it was, it was just a, hey, let's go with the latest and greatest. Most of the time for your new builds, new construction, category six will work fine everywhere. And usually the price difference between that and category five are, is negligible enough that you would say, hey, for 15 to 20 years of cabling, let's, let's stick with cat six. For the longer cable runs to key devices, high bandwidth capacity devices like wireless access point, you might consider going with category 6A. When it comes to network cabling, my friend, this is the way.